Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I hope you noticed the difference in video quality. I'm recording off my phone this time. Uh, just see how it'll work. But uh, here's my garden tractor that uh, y'all have seen plenty of on the channel and there's more to come on it soon. Um, but uh, recently I've installed this very nice, beautiful chrome air horn on here and I never did an install video and now I'm having to rewire it again because the relay went out on it and I'm putting a fuse into the, into the power line. Power line. So I wanted to just go ahead and make a quick video of how I installed it. Um, I've already taken the battery out. Yes, that's a full-size car battery. Um, I'll show you how I put that in there here in a second. But I'll go ahead and raise the hood. I've already took the battery out. Um, but I just bolted it right into the hood. I had to take this piece out with the two with the four two screws here, and it clips in the front. Um, you take that out, and it slides out. Um, I did have to cut it out a little bit for the hose to stick through. And I installed a valve in the hose, so that way... When the compressor, because it's just a button push, you push the button, you push the button and the compressor comes on and it pushes air through the hose here. Well, I installed a valve into it to where I can control the airflow. So if I don't want to blast people's ears out, I can just uh, change the airflow. I can't cut it all the way off else it'll burn the compressor up. But uh, then if I want to just open it up, I open it up, hit the button, it's really loud. If I turn it down some, hit the button, it's not as loud. So yeah, that's how I did that. But um, anyway, for the car battery deal, just went and got some uh, regular uh, battery terminals and just bolted the existing lawnmower uh, battery cable right to the battery bolt here. And then this slides down on the top post of the battery, right there and there. And that's how I installed that on here. But uh, yeah, so the horn goes like this. The compressor is here and the button is right there. And basically, uh, you can, uh, I might go spin it a little bit here in a second. That's my finger. Hi, finger. And what I can uh, rotate this around. So basically, what I'm gonna have is the one goes to the, the positive side, which will be right here with the fuse. And this is a fuse I cut off a wiring harness off another lawnmower uh, that was junk. And that right there is going to hook up right here. This is gonna get a piece like that, the eye piece right there. It's going to, where is it? There it is. This is gonna get that, get one of these, one of these right there, crimped onto it, and then it's going to bolt right to the button here. And the other side is just gonna go straight down to the positive side of the horn. And something to note about these horns and pretty much any other electric air horn you'll get, if you wire it up backwards, it will still work, it will just sound dull, and it won't work at all. Or, it, like I said, it still will work, it just won't sound right. But if you switch it again, and it'll actually blow right. Basically, it's the fan will spin the opposite direction and it'll blow air this way instead of out into the hose. It won't hurt it, but it's still best to do it the right way else. There's really no purpose in having a horn. But the ground, instead of going to the negative side of the battery, it's just a simple wire that I need to actually recrimp here. Uh, it just goes to the negative side, comes right up, bolts right to the frame, it's grounded good. And uh, you'll notice there's bolts or nuts between these bolts here. And I had to do that because see the stub of the bolt it's stuck in here way too far so when the battery sits in here notice it's the big car battery the stub of the bolt rubbed so i had to put the, the nut there to space it out and it works pretty well so i'm gonna go ahead and get this done and i'll show you what i'm talking about i'll show you what i did Alrighty, so i have screwed it in bolted it down fastened the nut there or the bolt there and then i ha it's ready to go now so now I gotta go ahead and make myself a new piece of wire to run from the button to the bottom end of the horn because the one I have is just you know, not even that much too short. Go figure. So now I have to go find my spool of wire and make another one. But uh, yeah, making progress. Quick tip while doing this. If you can't find a pair of wire crimpers, use a small pair of ice grips to their lowest, tightest setting. Just clamp it down and hold it there for a minute. And uh, yeah, it squishes the wire on and it holds pretty tight. So now under here, on the button, both wires are on. So now we're coming down to the other end of the wire. And I'm about to crimp, or uh, strip it and put the end of it on, which is going to be one of these little slip-on ends. And this slides onto the bottom of the horn. And I will be just about done with this project after I put the battery back in and I'll have to test it, of course. Just so you guys don't think I'm crazy with the vice trip, with the vice grip trick, it's pretty tight on there, and I don't think it's going to come off. Uh, I'm not going to be yanking on these wires or anything. 
I can go ahead and now can take and put it onto the horn. Slide it on there, tuck the wire behind the dash, feed some of it up in there. Yeah. We're done and wired. Well, with the wiring all finished up, I went ahead and installed the battery back in. I still have to put the uh, the uh, battery terminal bolts back on. But um, yes, so it is fully wired in. And like I said, with the battery, it just barely fits in between that gap. And with those bolt studs, they would stick in here like there and the battery wouldn't fit. And you can see over here on the other side, it's just touching the solenoid, so that wouldn't work either. So it is a perfectly tight fit. Um, this battery actually came out of a, a, a real tractor, not a garden tractor, but it fits in here good now and it works really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these put back on. That and the negative, where is it at? Here it is. Go ahead and slide it back on and get it in place. And then I got to take and pretty much hit the button. Oh wait, I didn't, I gotta tighten it down, duh. Alrighty everyone, uh, as you just seen, it kind of made me look stupid because I thought I didn't bolt the battery terminals down. But in fact, after a quick bypass test with my test leads, <coughs> it does work. It's just my button went out. The button does not work no more. Even when I bypassed the fuse and went straight to the button, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole out a little bit bigger and put this fresh new one in and just get rid of this junk. Alrighty, you guys, my new button is installed and it is tightened up and the wires are installed onto it. And I had to put a little piece of uh, blue, where's my finger? There it is, uh, blue painter's tape on it just to make sure it's covered and it's not gonna corrode the threads or anything in case I do have to take it back off again. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, uh, how do I reach back there? I'm gonna go ahead and push the, that on there a little bit better. But yeah, now I can go ahead and put the battery back in and see if it works this time. Hopefully it will. Alrighty, y'all. Well, under the hood, or how far ever I can open it, the battery's been reinstalled. Everything's been tightened up. I'm going to get the valve resituated. And, uh, yeah. I think this project's done. And like I said, with the, with the valve, I can close it up some more. It's not as loud. Open it all the way. Close it most of the way. It's not nearly as bad. So yeah, I think we're done here. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a, some use out of it or whatever. Um, and I just thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the likes. Don't forget the like and subscribe. Comment what you think of the horn. Uh, this was a horn I got off Amazon. I believe it was twenty-three dollars. There's the brand. I know it's upside down. But I can leave a link to it in the description. Um, it was uh, $23, $22, I can't remember, but it was pretty cheap for how loud it is. And uh, yeah, this is the box it came in. And I guess there's a real semi truck on the box. But uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.